I'm David Harvey and welcome to Harvey's of Whitney. We're an old established family business going back some 70 years and in this masterclass video you'll see some of the beautiful pieces which I deal in and I will try to put them into their historical context. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to get notifications of future masterclass videos. Click the link below to subscribe to our free newsletter packed full of details of fresh acquisitions and news from the antiques trade. So we move from Queen Anne, the last of the Stuart monarchs, onto George I, the first of the Hanoverians. Now, of course, they came from Germany, so we've had in quick succession France, Holland and Germany for our royal families. Now, this piece here dates from about 1720. It's George I's period. Again, though, we're still in the age of walnut, walnut, kingwood and the such like. The walnut on this figured all the way across, quartered, as we call it, by taking consecutive pieces of veneer and opening them out like that, then like that, to give this patterned effect. What we've also got here, though, is the interpretation of the cabriole leg. It becomes a little bit straighter, terminating in the pad feet down at the bottom with these rather nice lappets on the corner. And those are all typical of the George I period. Equally, though, and typical of tables of this ilk, this one particularly nice having a concertina action to support it all the way around, opens out. And you can see here, it's got the four stands, one in each corner, for putting your candlesticks on. And these are what we call guinea wells. Guinea wells because at this period, everyone in Britain was gambling, it would appear. They would bet on anything during the Georgian period, from raindrops running down a window, to horses, to dogs. They had cockfighting, they bet on cocks, and so they bet on cards as well. So a George I card table, dating from about 1720, 1725, with the candle stands and the guinea wells, altogether a very beautiful piece, but very much a piece of that time. So we've looked at a card table that dates from the George I period. Now we're looking at something that's mid 18th century, George II period. And we've gone from the age of walnut into the age of mahogany. Just look at the richness of that mahogany on there. Beautiful figuring, colour and grain. But what's also interesting is to see the progression of styles. If you look at the leg on the previous card table and compare it to this, you'll see immediately that the foot has become much more pronounced. It's much more rounded. It's what we call a club foot. But it's also, at one and the same time, developed this carved detail here on the knee. It's a shell and some foliage, but also as a precursor to the Rococo, you've got this scroll here, in the shape of a letter C, and again here and there. Now that's all very important because it helps us to define the date. Mid 18th century. This one dates from about 1750 to 1760. It's George II period. And again the inside. This one a tea table rather than a card table. But how about that? Originally you can see it would have been this colour much more but the outside has faded a little bit. A very striking table. Now, this pair of chairs are the very epitome of what we call the Chippendale style or Chippendale period that was prevalent during the 1750s, 60s and early 70s. So it sort of runs between the reign of George II and the reign of George III. It sees the introduction of Thomas Chippendale's director, his wonderful work of designs, which gained great popularity and became 
the book by which that whole period has been named. To focus on a few areas, we see the Rococo style becoming the prevalent style in fashionable furniture of that period. And the Rococo style, taken from the French rocaille, you have the use of foliage. Here you've got all these leaf patterns here. The use of scroll work. You've got these S shapes. You've got the C shape, the letter C. You've also got the introduction of the Gothic feel here in this lattice work. Again, you've got the same fluting and stop fluting here as we've seen on other pieces. But you've also got the development of the cabriole leg with this heavy carved ball and claw foot and the foliate carving again here on the knee. So there we are, a very handsome pair of chairs. Transitional George II, George III. I do hope you have enjoyed viewing this video and there will be follow-up videos with discussions and fresh stock items as they become available. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to get news of future editions. Click the link below to subscribe to our free regular e-newsletter with further images of fresh acquisitions as well as free invitations to antiques fairs and exhibitions. Thank you.